my next little project heading towards getting the ceilings done is this mistake that I knew I was making. You see the silver behind there? I should have dog-eared all those or uh, tongue and grooved or something. So I'm going to put, uh, I sawed up some furring strips and I'm going to put furring strips in there. I got to do it all the way down. All of those. I can see the various angles. You can see the silver. Now I could paint those, you know, with black paint and just call it a day, but I'm building a thousand year home. I don't want to cheat. Look at that. You can't see me. I don't want to see. Man, it gets dark early. That gets it is after five o'clock. So Hank hasn't come up yet and asked me for oats. So I'm not, I know I'm not right at five. Must be a little bit before it. All right. Uh, everybody needs one of these that builds a shipping container home. Looky. My, it's my exotic dancer pole I pulled out of the trash. And what do I do with an exotic dancer pole? Well, when I'm all done building a house, I'm going to take up exotic dancing. But right now, it happens to be eight foot tall. And what size are my ceilings? Ah, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. They're eight foot tall. So there's a little piece in here a little, that I can pull out. A two inch piece and a four inch piece. I do that from time to time. Whoops. To make it fit as I move these beams around. Let me get that out. So I can prove it to you. Prove it to you. I don't know. Are you still watching me over there, Internet? A little hot in here. I'm going to have to step out. I can see that I'm getting overheated. Overheated. An old dude. I'm feeling it lately. Like too much jam scraped over dry bread. I'll flip it around. I'll be. I'll flip it around. That way I can put my foot on it and control it a little better. I'll be. There. break my window. Alright. Well, there you go. Now you know what I use my stripper pole for. And use it to hold stuff up so I can slide stuff around. Anyway, I need a little more room on that so I can lift that board up if I can. I don't know if I can. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that wind. Uh, I tell you, I've got the windows open. It blows in. Literally while I was building this Connex, I got a super, uh, super storm come in. It came down and it was, uh, it whirled so hard it ripped the boards off the wall, spun them around in the middle of the connex and dropped them. Slowed me down, let me tell you. What do they call them? Microbursts is what they call those. And I have been punched in the face by a tornado in Texas. True story. I'm going to move y'all while I do the back. I'm going to take a break. Then maybe I'll tell you about me getting punched in the face by a tornado in Texas. True story. I finally am done with my regular full-time job, and I have a little bit of time to do work in here. So, uh, And I don't work in the dark, so i got to hurry along here. But uh, I'm going to uh, wrap myself out here. Uh, if you've watched my videos, you'll notice that uh, when I put these in, I said, oh, it's the one thing I'm going to do that's lazy. I'm not going to put a tongue and groove or a 45 degree bevel in there. And I don't know if you can see, but you can see through the gaps now and clearly see the uh, reflective foil. And I'm not going to put drywall and insulation behind these. These are part of the structure. And um, the reason being, this is an inside wall, ultimately, that'll have a great hull on the other side of it. 
and so this uh, will not be seeing sun. Also, it's on the uh, north side. It's true north facing, so the sun doesn't hit it as it uh, makes this arc in the sky. But you can really see it here, right? So visually, I can't let people see, uh, you know, a, a terrible uh, reflection. So a couple of different ways. I could spray paint it, but you know, you would still see, even if I use flat black, you'd still see the reflection. So um, listen, this didn't catch me. This didn't catch me by surprise. So when I didn't do the tongue and groove or the 45 degree bevels, and I said, oh, I'm being lazy. I've been lazy before, but it always comes back to bite you. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some furring strips and uh, put furring strips on one side of the same wood cedar. And uh, that way you won't see the, uh, you know, the back and you'll see a, a nice little cedar spot in between, uh, just to keep it real. Similar to the batting that you see on the outside of houses here in Texas. So it's a regular feature. Now these will be against the wall, you'll never see them. But uh, <clears throat> anybody looking inside that cabinet sign could go, oh my gosh, it's half finished. So yes, I was lazy but I knew that I'd be to this point. And uh, so I actually went to uh, the big box stores uh, this weekend looking for furring strips. Foolish me, foolish me. Uh, we have not recovered from uh, COVID yet. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna grab one of these uh, two by fours, probably the crookedest one I got, and uh, run it through the saw and uh, make my own fur furring strips. There was not a furring strip to be found within a hundred miles of myself. So uh, gone is the day of all of the, the customized sawmill making all of the fun lumber and people could go in and get it. You know, they show you a big display of all the stuff you have and 93% and of it's available online. But if you order it, it never comes in. So uh, we're down to just... Uh, ugly whatever the big box stores give us or we have to be like myself custom make it and uh, i vote for custom making it uh that which i save in money uh in materials i uh spend on time so uh at the end of the day i've already worked a full-time job this is hard people i'm not a young man this is a retirement home i'm building i'm not building a house to uh, hide children in and raise a family and all that my kids are all grown uh you know so this is uh, my third forever home so every time i build them and it gets a little crowded and i get a wild hair i sell it and build another one but this one's it this one's it my forever home. So uh, me and old Hank going to retire here. I don't know. My daughter might take him back. He is not my horse. He's my daughter's horse. I just say he's my horse. Uh, uh, the destiny comes to get my daughter comes and gets the uh, wolf. She won't let me keep the wolf. I tried the other day. I said, I'll oh, just leave him here. I'll, I'll take him off your hand. She goes, no. And she'll probably come get him eventually. So uh, anyway, that'll be, uh, be just all me all alone out here. So sad. Nobody loves me. I won't even have an old horse to keep me company. But let me cut these furring strips on that sad little note. It's a sad. Like and subscribe. That's what I was going with that. Like and subscribe because you're all that I got. So like and subscribe. Follow me along. Uh, let me cut these furring strips. And if I get enough time, maybe I'll make a couple of shelves. But at least let me rip for some furring strips. I'm going to put you on uh, stop motion uh, while I set up the saw. And, uh, hey, gosh, look, I'm silhouetted. woo Look, my poor camera struggled. It's, listen, it's late in the evening. It's darker than it looks. All right, let me set you up, and I'll get ripping some furring strips.
didn't I didn't get away with that because <clears throat> the last cut was too thin and it walked away. I needed my push stick. It's getting sundown. I pulled them through instead to save my fingers. But uh, <clears throat> I'm not too concerned. Let's take a look at this last one. See it walked out there. So I'll just use that strip someplace else. Let me let me get it in focus. Let me get it in frame. All right. You see the the last one walked out from my board. I needed a push stick. All right, but I'm gonna glue these in and staple them. So one secret of building things that last a long, long time is to avoid thin and avoid small. And this is the smallest piece of wood that I've cut so far. And in retrospect, if I uh, I was wanted to be uh, more careful, look at the sundown, get me. <laughs> Sorry if it's too dark. Uh, Anyway, uh, I would have cut them at 45 degree bevels and put them in, or I would have tongue grooved them and put them in. But uh, this was faster than that, and I got to build a house, so uh, it's going to have to do. But the idea of having a bunch of thins, you know, um, I'm building a thousand year house. Uh, thin things wear out, right? So try to keep things thicker. Uh, this will be fine because it's against the back wall. It won't be exposed to air or sunlight or anything like that. So I'm hoping that it will last a thousand years. Uh, the boards that it's up against should. So, and then everything will be treated with uh, either linseed or cedar oil. I haven't decided yet. Um, and uh, that'll help preserve it for a long, long time. Boards here will, will show up in the background and I could get black spray paint and spray that. and. You want to see it, but the uh, gap's going to invite, uh, you know, spiders to get in there. And just make a little home for Texas that I don't really want. So, uh, no, I knew that when I did it. So, my choice was that I could have uh, made these at 45 degree bevels each board. And then they would have been, uh, you know, each board would have been beveled. And then your eyeball wouldn't have seen that gap. And as they, they changed, um, you want to see. So, uh... So painting one 45 degree, you could do tongue and, tongue and groove, which makes things strong. But this isn't structural, it's just decorative. So in, in another video, you'll see that I, I went to the stores again to see about furring strips. You would think you could find furring strip, you can't. You might as well get yourself a table saw, you know you're gonna need to rip them yourself. But I got it out of cedar anyway. So between each one of these boards, where your eyeball's gonna go, I'm just gonna glue up and tack a, and I'm not even sure I need the glue. I, I'll do the glue, I'll do the glue. And then I'll, I'll nail up a, a furring strip. Your eyeball will not be able to see the insulation. Now that insulation, I was thinking about adding the one inch um, uh, rock wool and then the drywall. But in another video that I measured, I'm trying to make this handicap accessible. So. Uh, if I push that out, you know, um, two inches or three inches for all of that material, uh, then suddenly I'm, I'm down to, you know, instead of uh, 36 inches, I'm down to 30, 32 or something like that. Plus the walls will have dimension, so I'm going to be pushing it. But I want somebody to be able to enjoy this house that maybe has a disability. Uh, Alright, so i got to be careful that doesn't fall on my head. Let me raise that so you see what I'm pointing at. Boopity. All right. So right now it's temporarily supporting a ceiling joist. Now that comes down and bops me on the head. I am going to regret life. So uh, it shouldn't. I've got this right where it is. I won't move that around. Plus I've got my exotic dancer pole holding that up. Now you know what I'm up to as I do it. <clears throat> Fixing now. So back to being punched in the face by a tornado. Listen, I ain't got very many stories. So y'all, if you watch me every, all the time, you'll run into the same stories a couple of times. I forget which ones I, but anyway, microburst and that. There was a microburst that came into this when I had first cut all the windows out and I was rough framing the um, trees <laughs> inside here. Not inconsequential, a microburst came inside, ripped these posts off the wall that were there, they were there temporarily, twisted them together and dropped them in the middle of the floor. I lost my mind, I lost my mind. Not the first time that the wind here in Texas took personal umbrage against me. Years ago, I was in a stone house, big stone house, and my dog, who was a very good old collie, jumped through the dining room screen, right through the screen hauled through the house and jumped right through the living room window screen and out he went. 
And I, I, I stood up. I said, what in the world? And I, right when I stood up, it was like King Kong hit the top of my house. Boom. And it dropped me to the ground. It physically dropped me to the ground. Now, a reasonable person probably would have stayed on the ground. But an unreasonable person would have said, what in the world? Let me go open the door and see what's wrong outside. And right when I opened the door, I realized I was in the middle of a tornado. It had hit my house, my house. Microburst, come down, hit my house. My dog was saying, get on my six, buddy. Follow this collie butt. And, uh, he, was, he was a lot faster than me, he was gone. But he did try to save my life. And I opened that door and right when I did it, it was like in the cartoons, there was this board just sitting out there and it hit me in the face, bam. And immediately I felt blood in my hands and I dropped to the ground and I was blind. I was blind. And uh, I knew in that moment, because as I was walking to the door, the power went out. So I was blind without power and I knew I was in a tornado. I could hear it. But I couldn't at first. I must have been right in a supercell. I had, there was a stone outbuilding that was every bit of 100 foot long with stone pillars. And it grabbed that outbuilding with the stone pillars, pulled them up out the ground, and took it uh, three football fields away and dropped it in the top of the live oaks. Quite the experience. Long story short, the next morning, I, I what I did, I, I'm there just covered in blood, knowing that it's a desperate situation. I knew I want to find my cell phone, and I figured, well, I'm tired, I'll go to bed. In the middle of that tornado, I crawled to a bedroom, I crawled into bed and went to bed. The tornado left my house alone and didn't kill me that day, but uh, definitely won that fight. And I, I got a, I, I, the tornado owes me one, I'm looking for it. The next morning I got up and there was enough water in one of the pipes. I washed both eyes. The one one had opened. The other one I got open enough. I drove to the hospital and they stitched my cornea back in my eye. And that tornado punched my eyeball out. In uh, Texas. That's a tough bit of business. Also, that's what I get for living alone. Tornadoes go out of their way. Let's talk about these furry strips. All right. Man, I am debating gluing one side or not, but I think I won't because uh, this way it can move a little bit in the temperature and humidity. And if I glue it, I don't think I'll have that. So let's see what we can do with just, just nails. Y'all agree with that decision? Let me know, Internet. What? What? You disagreeing with me? Too late now. Oh well, internet. Oop. Oh well, internet. Oh my gosh, internet, you let me get off the rail while I was busy yammering at you. Already got a disaster on my hand. Where was my, where were you at? Come on now, I told you that story so you'd be my friends. Look at that, not even on the, not even on the seam. I'll tell you a thing or two. All right, don't go wandering off. Stay right on that seam. one side and then wherever there's a shelf I'll go ahead and put it on the other side all right let's inspect the inside of that and see if there's any nails dangling out the back 
That's my, you know what, I'm gonna do another one. We'll do two and then I'll inspect. Ooh, look at that, all right. There's one you can see through. Can you see through it? You can see through it, all right? Let me zoom a little bit even. All right, you can see through it, right? And there's what we just did, see? <coughs> and this is what I was targeting, the backs of these shelves. You see any stray nails? I don't see any stray nails. Uh -huh. All right. Well, that worked out real well, didn't it? <clears throat> so now we're going to do <coughs> furring strips on the other side, too. I didn't save me all of that. If I would have had to get out a router and tongue and groove, I don't know if I could have tongue and grooved the, uh, those little cedar boards that I'm using, right? Zoom out. Growing up on a farm, I bet you we had, plus my kids, and I bet you I've had 30 or 40 dogs in my life. Only two, three that have been human-like. And that collie was one of them. After he passed away, he was an old dog. He could climb trees. And uh, I remember he put his front paws around and then he'd shimmy up the tree with his back paws. And I remember seeing them squirrels chewing them out. Tick, 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 tick. And they would start climbing and literally the squirrel's eyeballs would go, go like, like that as he climbed the tree. And uh, really something. I saw, you know, why the dogs bark. I'll walk underneath the tree real quiet one day and a squirrel was on a branch chewing on a nut and he went woof and the squirrel ah, 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 and fell out of the tree. <laughs> so it, barking works. Ah, that was a good dog. Anyway, out of all them 40 dogs in my life, that dog was something else, let me tell you. Tried to save me from a tornado. After that, I paid real good attention to him whenever he was acting weird. I don't know, you know. Probably trying to save my life. I told you about that beam up there. I'm going to have to scooch that out a little more. My uh, brad nailer isn't, isn't fitting there. Oh, it's not touching the board anymore, but... I want to make sure I don't get bonked on the head. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. All right. All right. All right. Most excellent. And it looks good, the internet. If and somebody would ever, a thousand years from now, Pull this cabinet out from the wall. They're not going to be able to because it's going to be bolted to the wall, to the ceiling, and to the floor. They ain't ever moving this again. The reason why that is, I'm carrying the structural load of the middle of the house. I'm stiffening the middle of the house using these cabinets, this ceiling. It's all part of the engineering. Nobody moving this cabinet again. Now, a thousand years from now, people won't know that because they don't see the fasteners. All my fasteners are blind. You don't see fasteners. That's part of... My custom build. I want people to know a skilled craftsman did this. Covered those holes up pretty good. I believe that it could still breathe. I can open this and see. Quick inspection. I see zero nails through. I did put them all in the right spot. I get an A plus. What should I do? I'm thinking about uh, maybe putting a reinforced. No, I 
mm, I might put a reinforcing board up at the top. Uh, just to give it a finished look, maybe. Nah, I can wait. I can wait. All right, let me let me put it back in the space and put these ceiling uh, rafters in. So I'm gonna stop you here and restage.